Have you ever wondered how your favourite math rock guitarist plays such complicated riffs so cleanly? Yet, when you try to play such riffs, notes start to bleed into each other, there's unwanted string ring and other overtones, and the parts just start sounding all messy. Well, how do they play so cleanly? Well, besides tons of practice, let's say, it's often down to the concept of muting, a technique that is often overlooked or underpracticed by many guitarists. Yet, it is an incredibly important technique that you need to develop in order to take your guitar playing to the next level. So in today's video, I'll break down three ways that you can effectively mute to play various types of math rock guitar techniques. Also, you can start playing more cleanly. Have you ever heard tight strumming patterns such as these examples on screen and thought to yourself, I'd love to be able to play that tight? Well, to play like this comes down to two things, effective muting when we're playing chords and the other is your control over chords itself. So when you're playing a strumming pattern, it's the release off the chord to make that kind of silence in between. And I'm just gonna turn the reverb off just to demonstrate you know, how tight this should sound. So let's practice both of these approaches by using a math rock-esque strumming pattern along with a chord progression. And the chord progression goes like this. We're going to be using shell voicings for chords. And the first approach is to effective muting when strumming. And to do this, we're going to be looking at two parts of the chord, above the chord and below the chord. Above the chord, depending on what fingers you're using, a lot of guitarists will use the um, a part of the finger to touch the string above to mute it when strumming. For example, when we come to the second chord, I could be using the top of my middle finger here to mute the string there. Or I could even bring, as I've got here, I can bring a finger on top of the string to mute it as well. And then we need to mute below as well. And here we can use any part of our finger. In this case, I'm using the underside of my index finger. But when I move through chord shapes, this might change. But I found in my experience, 90% of the time is going to probably be the underside of your index finger that's taking care of strings that are above the chord, if there are any. And what we're aiming for here is that we can play one note and we could hit all of the strings and we'd only realistically hear that one note. And this is a great technique for adding a bit of you know, pro percussiveness, let's say, to your notes as well while making it sound really clean. So we need to now combine this with the other approach with our mastery over tension and release, let's say, pressure onto the chord and pressure off. So that's why I've come up with this um, math rock chord progression that's based on a, a delta sleep strumming pattern in 11-8 time, because it's got lots of lifts where we need to hit these um, rests that are in between the chord. So to do that, we're going to, one, well, make sure we're muting, and then whenever there's a rest, after we play the chord, we're going to hit the chord and pressure at the same time, and then release it straight afterwards. And we want to make sure we get the correct note length for each of these strums. Let's practice this exercise all the way through to fully master the idea and then we'll move on to the next one. Interrupting Steve here. If you're enjoying lessons like this, then be sure to check out my newsletter. Every Wednesday, you can join hundreds of other guitarists getting a little mini lesson where I just go into further detail about concepts that I cover on this channel. If you're interested in that, then there's a link for that down below in the description and the first comment of this video. Thanks, back to the video. Moving on, it's time to talk about those fast, precise, and often unconventional licks, riffs, and phrases often used by math rock guitarists. Again, like with effective muting when it comes to strumming, there are certain muting techniques that we can use to play riffs more cleanly. And to practice this we're going to expand on our first chord exercise by including some little licks and twiddly bits between these chords, much like math rock guitarists would do uh, with actual songwriting. 
So for each chord, we're going to cut them a little bit shorter and we're going to round them off by putting a little phrase after each one. So for our first chord, we're going to play that much instead. And then we're going to pick this D minor arpeggio. And much like for muting techniques with strumming chords, the muting techniques here, we want to be muting anything that's above or below to get rid of any potential string ring, let's say, and make it sound more clean. So in this case, if we were picking this arpeggio here, we can use the, again, the top of our index finger here to mute that string there. In our case, we're actually par muting, so we don't need to worry too much about that because we've already muted this low string with the palm on this hand with the fleshy part. And then again, anything that's above the chord, as we roll across with our fingers, it can all be taken care of with the underside of our index finger. The next chord, I've added a bit more of a stretch here to test you, but it's a very similar application with the palm muting. And you can see my index finger is leaning on those strings ever so lightly just to mute them there. But the trick to tying this all together before we move on to the next chord is that I've done this on purpose with strumming and playing these riffs because I've noticed in my time giving guitar lessons that guitarists when they move from strumming to picking uh, in quick su succession let's say they do things like this um, your picking hand will be still semi floating Whereas realistically, we want to get as much control over it as possible by having it rest on the bridge. And all of the picking work should be done from an anchor point here. And your wrist is going to be doing the picking. Like so. Your arm shouldn't be moving up and down. Any part that we're picking, let's anchor it onto the bridge here to play that most precisely and cleanly. Trust me, it will really change the way that you're playing if you haven't been doing so already. It allow you to play much more quickly and much more cleanly, like so. Moving on to our third chord. And I hear you say now, but what about when we pick the other way, when we go down instead of up? So I've included this cheeky little arpeggio here uh, for a G minor, uh, for a G dominant seven sound. This one, we're going to be going the opposite way. And the last chord here, to play this cleanly, because you're going to release, you're muting, there's no extra sound, you can bring your little finger down here, ready to start the arpeggio. And again, anchoring your, your wrist on the guitar here, and then it's all going to be this up pick motion. And as you roll across the strings, you're going to be muting it more and more with your index finger. And then I put a little gap at the end just to get you prepared for the, give you a little break, let's say, before we get back to the start of the repeat. All right, let's practice this one. video about math rock guitar techniques would be complete without talking about finger tapping. And in my experience, this is one of the most tricky techniques to play cleanly. But fret not, let's look at a few ways that we can start playing finger tapping more cleanly. And again, let's expand on the already established exercise by incorporating those strumming muting techniques. And we're now going to introduce those finger tapping muting techniques by adding a finger tapping riff in between these chords. It's worth noting I'm going to be tapping with a pick. So I'm going to be using my middle and my index finger on my strumming hand to perform any tapping that I will do there. Okay, so now we're getting familiar with the strumming muting. The tapping riff is going to go like this. It's still based around that, you know, the arpeggio shapes that we've been doing, in this case, the D minor arpeggio. And I'm basing it around a, an inversion for the tapping part up here, if you're wondering. But there's um, a little bit tricky now for our tapping because we're hammering on from nowhere. Here, it's not the same as when we're already fretting the note and then we can effectively mute you know, the string above and below. And um, as you can hear, 
we're now hammering on from nowhere. So a few things that we can do, it all depends on the context, but in the context of our riff here, we can use our, because I'm gonna bring in my hand up here for tapping, I can use the underside of my palm here to mute that low string. So when I'm hammering on from nowhere, all I'm taking care of now is making sure that I do my best to stop these strings ringing. But you got to hear there. Unfortunately, there's not much you can do about that. Uh, that extra overtone if you hear it. You can get a fret wrap to help with that, but um, no, you just gotta do your best, especially when you're tapping around these where there's, you know, these harmonics on the fifth, the seventh and twelfth. Just be aware that you are going to get a lot more um, overtones when tapping around those frets. So you're going to tap on there. And on this hand, you'll be using your middle finger to tap the twelfth. And the second part of this muting technique is to always be using your index finger or another finger, but I found 90% of the time, to be honest, it's going to be your index finger as a mute as you go across these tapping strings, you know, as I go across the strings here. Pay attention to the index finger. When it's not tapping. When it's not tapping. It's muting those strings. So that's for our first shape with the next chord. So come to our next chord. And again, we're going to keep that same kind of framework here. And again, I'm going to be muting the lower string again with the palm of my hand here. And again, notice my index finger is completely muting as I go across. And then for our last chord, I thought I'd have some fun here. We're going to keep that same shape we did earlier for the G7. But instead, we're going to tap it ascending instead. And this one's great practice for muting because there's so much shifting going on here. What I'm doing, if I break this down quickly for you, after I tap on these first, the first two frets here from the G string, and when I release off here, I can be muting here with this finger, or I could use the palm of my hand here to stop this, you know, that getting that low E sound there. And then here again, hammering on from nowhere. So I'm trying to bring my palm across the frets here. So now I'm touching the A string to stop this one ringing when I hammer on from nowhere here with this finger. Otherwise, I know you might be able to hear that a string faintly but if I bring my palm if I go across with the arpeggio I can start to mute it that way and the same applies here when I get to those higher strings all right so one last time let's practice this exercise You may have noticed that I missed out one of the biggest techniques used by Mafra guitarists, and that is finger picking. And there's a reason for that. I want to dedicate an entire video to that one technique with muting because there's a lot more to it than I could just put into this video. However, if you're interested in learning about how to perform the finger tapping technique correctly, then I highly recommend checking out this video here and you'll learn some awesome finger picking riffs at the same time. A big thanks to the patrons that support this channel. See you in the next video. Goodbye.